Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to part two in the JLH Class A Amplifier series. Made some progress, as you can see I have completed the driver board for the second channel, because obviously this is going to become a stereo amplifier. This is a new one, this is the one we've seen the last time. What I have done is I cleaned up the wiring on here, mounted the potentiometer and the resistor properly on the board, as you can see. Um, now, previously in the last video that was just a temporary setup. The thing is, the entire base current of um, the uh, transistors, or the output transistors, flows through these three components. And I got it adjusted for one amp of collector current. And so, since the current amplification of these 2 and 3055 transistors is uh, more on the low side, there is quite a significant current going through these uh, components into the bases of the output transistors. So, Consequently, I have used 5 watt resistors. With a potentiometer, I wasn't sure. I thought, well, we may just, uh, we may just going to be able to have that as a test setup to kind of figure out what kind of a resistor value is required to get a certain output current, and then we'll, uh, you know, for the final product, we'll have to replace it with a fixed resistor with uh, higher wattage. Um, but as it turns out, this potentiometer does not end up being overloaded. As a matter of fact, I can, you know, it is getting a bit warm, I will have to say that. It is getting a bit warm, just like these resistors, but um, it doesn't get hot and it doesn't start smoking or anything like that, so I guess it's okay to leave it in there, so I have mounted that all permanently. Now, also in the last video, I uh, told you about the problem that I had with this uh, amplifier that was starting to oscillate when you had an open input. Well, I fixed that. I fixed that. As you can see, I got, uh, got this new driver board all hooked up and powered up. Here is our output sine wave on the scope. I'm now going to unhook the input. Here is one, here is two, open input, and as you can see, straight line, that's what we want to have. Well, it's not entirely straight, we are getting some noise, but that's kind of obvious. Anyway, uh, so I got that fixed, and what I did in order to do, get that done, is um, I actually went ahead so I told you I was using strip board, and that was indeed part of the problem. Or, you know, maybe the problem. What I did was I went ahead and broke a lot more traces than uh, I originally had broken. So you can see basically we have this line going all the way through on all the traces that, uh, that aren't used. So that we basically separate the input side from the output side. I think what might have caused the problem in the end was right here. This is the base of the PNP input transistor. And in the original design it was running all the way across over here right into the output part. And uh, I guess you can all imagine that uh, you know, there probably was some interference going on in here and the output signal was getting into the, onto the trace of the base of the first transistor, which of course carries the input signal and boom, you got a nice feedback loop and uh, starts oscillating. As you can see, that basically fixed that problem. I broke the trace right there and uh, yeah, also made sure to, you know, insulate everything else really well. And um, no more problems. It is important that uh, the 
transistor, the output transistor with the uh, higher HFE current gain factor is in this position. And I did measure the output transistors using multimeter. And uh, as you can see, this one up there has 18. This one down here has 34. I wrote that on there, wrote down the transistors. So consequently, this one is in the position of that one. And yes, I know, ideally, you'd have transistors with matched gain. However, I don't have the money and I don't have the time to order in 200 2N3055 transistors, measure them all just to find, you know, two pairs that happen to have the same factor. So, I did make sure that I go with uh, values that are somewhat close to each other. The second channel is going to be made of um, two, um, 2N3055s that have, I believe, like 23 and 24, relatively close to each other. Uh, I also had one with a whopping 98. Of course, that one is not going to be used because that is way too far off from all the rest of the transistors. The next step is going to be to modify this heatsink right here to carry the other channels pair of 2N3055 transistors. These two heatsinks originally were designed to carry um, a single STK type hybrid power amplifier IC. So drilled a couple of holes and cut some threads and all that. So that one's all done, obviously. This one I'll also have to um, cut off part of the top to make it fit into the housing and part of the side as well. So that's going to be the next step to get this thing all done. Anyway, that's it for right now. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.